Hello there. <laughs> Hi. I just filmed this video, but in the last clip, I was really like, oh, I hadn't had a coffee, and I was really like, this is what you should do to be mindful when shopping, and it wasn't great. It wasn't great, sweetheart. It wasn't great. Now, add me coffee. I've got some squash in here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try refilling it. Okay, so this is going to be a little checklist that I have in my little brain when I go shopping, whether it's in person or if it's online, I have this little checklist that I think before I make a purchase. And I found it really helpful to make sure that I'm shopping consciously and only buying what I need and what I know will last, okay? So point number one is set your intentions before you leave the house or before you go online shopping. So have, have a little think, have a little assess of your wardrobe set your intentions for what you need and what you like and just have in your mind magpie salut hello how's your wife okay good chat distracted already <laughs> so yeah basically just assess what you need and what you don't need so when you go shopping in person it's very easy to just pass something and be like wow that's so amazing i love that i'm gonna bring it home with me if you check on your list, you're like, okay, I need simple tops to go under things. That's not that, so I'm not going to buy it. I don't need it. And my point number two, determine want from need. When you're thinking about making a purchase, hold it up and be like, do I need this? Or do I just want this? And that's the question. That's a very quick point. Just simply determining what you want from what you need. Very effective and very helpful when shopping. Point number three is check the fabrics and know what you do and do not like. Now, I went shopping with my grandma. She's a very trendy, trendy lady. She knows exactly fabrics that she does and doesn't like, and she knows styles and things that she knows suit her and don't suit her. So we went shopping, she sees a jumper, and she's like, wow, I love that. And I'm like, oh, so lovely, it would really suit you. And she's, she's thinking about buying it, and then she's like, okay, let me just check the fabric. And she checked the fabric, and it was made from acrylic. It's a synthetic, man-made material. Derived from coal and petroleum. Um, but she knows from previous experience that that does not wash well. So she knows that if she bought that at home, she washes it once, it's gonna bubble and it's not gonna wash well. She knows that from experience. Obviously she's like mid 70s, so she's had a lot of experience shopping. But if you don't know the fabrics you like and don't like, go to your wardrobe, pick out all the bits that you absolutely love and take a look at the fabric label, see if there's a reoccurring theme of the fabric. So. I know that personally I love a tensile. It's an environmentally friendly fiber and it's super soft. So if I see an item and it says it's made from tensile, I'm like, okay, that's a good fabric. I know I like it, I know it washes well, etc. Now number four kind of links onto that as well. It's kind of like know your style, know what suits you, know what you don't like in terms of actual styles. I know I don't like a v-neck, I know this is technically contradictory because it's kind of a v-neck but I only wear this with a turtleneck really. I just like a crew neck, I love a crew neck or a turtleneck. I do not like a v-neck, that's something that I know. So if I see something, a t-shirt for example, I know that that's not going to suit me no matter how nice that print is. I ain't going to buy it because I know I'm not going to wear it consistently. So whether it's you only like dresses where they're bought in at the waist, consider whether you can bring them in with a belt if you can't and you know you're not going to wear that because it's not a style that you like you know, you know that you only see stuff that comes in at the waist so just consider your style and what you like what suits you what you don't like in terms of colors especially like i'm very pale <sighs> look at me yeah in terms of colors i know that i don't suit like, oatmeal creamy colors because Look at me, it makes me look naked because it's like, that's the color of my skin. There's a website, I think, I'll link it if I can find, I don't know if I've dreamt this or not, but I think there's a website. You can input your, your eye color, your hair color, and the tone of your skin and what color the veins are in your skin. I hope I haven't dreamt this because this, this is good. And it tells you the exact colors that suit your skin and your hair. And, would look great on you so for example i know that i suit a khaki color a little dark green search it goes very nicely with my hair i know that it suits me so just know just know the colors that you like and don't like now number five is question 
Is it trend led? Is this a trend piece? Is this something that's gonna go out of fashion very quickly? I loved the sweater vest, the sleeveless knit trend. I loved that, didn't invest in it because I know it's a trend and I know that I'd probably go off of it quite soon, but I'm still thinking about it. I love that trend. So what I'm thinking about doing is going on Depop and buying a, a sweater vest thing secondhand and that's the way that I would, would invest in the trend if it's been like a solid year and I'm still thinking, okay, I really like that trend then perhaps invest secondhand or rent. You can rent stuff now. It's a very big growing market. For example, a brand called Her, H-U-R-R. -R. Very lovely brand. You can rent your So just question, is it trend-led? Am I gonna like this in a year? I bought into the shacket trend, the checked shacket thing. Now I'm not really a prince kind of girl and a big, like colourful thing. Now I sold it on Depop literally like last week because I, I'd only worn it a handful of times and it's been like three years and it's very sad. So it's gone to a new home and it's going to get more wear and life out of it with someone else. But that's an example of a trend that I bought into that I now know was a mistake and that's okay. I've learned from these things. Point number six is Question if it's versatile, can you wear it for day and night? Can it be layered up? Can you wear it in the summer and in the winter? That's what I mean by seasonless. So I have a dress in my wardrobe that's like a, a satin bias cut dress. I think they're called just a silky dress, quite skimpy. It's long, but you know, it's quite light. And I can lay that up with a turtleneck and I can lay that. Hope you're okay, everybody in the ambulance. Um, and I can layer that up with a turtleneck, tights and big chunky boots and leather jacket and I look quite cool and I like it if I do say so myself but just consider whether you can layer it up and I also wore that dress to a wedding I wore it with some nice jewellery and some heels and it was great for the summer wedding but it's also great in the winter so just question, is that piece versatile? when can you wear it? can you wear it in both seasons? all of the seasons Point number seven is to question whether it fits in with your current wardrobe. So if you're buying something and you're thinking, oh, I need to get this other item to make this work as an outfit, mm, don't do that. make use of what you already own. So just buy something that works with what you already have. Buy something that goes with an item that you also love in your wardrobe and you know that you get lots of wear out of. Why not? Point number eight is only buy it if it fits you comfortably and you are comfortable. Now sometimes I'm a victim of sacrificing my comfort for fashion and my partner finds this very annoying because I'll see this beautiful dress and I'm like I love it, I love it but it's only in this size and I just don't buy it. Something that also just oh, grinds my gears is when people are like I'm gonna lose weight <laughs> to fit into that dress. Like stop it stop it right now like just buy clothes that fit your body as it is maybe buy something with a little bit more room it just yeah don't buy something and think i'm gonna lose weight to fit into that no 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 buy something that fits you make sure it fits you so point number nine is to do with sale items this is something that winds me right up for example you see a jumper it's a hundred pounds reduced to 20 pounds and you're like i have to get it it's such a good deal oh my god i have to what a steal don't stop it immediately the number one thing that i do if i see something like that and i go into that mentality of like oh it's such a good deal i have to get it number one you don't have to get it but my main thought process is just would you buy that item full price would you buy that jumper for £100? If the answer is probably not, don't buy it. Because if it's £20, like, yes, you've got a great deal, but did you love it enough to pay £100 for it? In most cases, probably not. Just consider how much you love that garment. Would you pay full price for it? If the answer is no, don't buy it. Please. For the love of God. Final point is try your stuff on. Try things on. Obviously it's hard when you're online, knowing your sizing helps as well. But if you're shopping in person, try it on. Please, it saves you so much time of like, if it doesn't fit, you have to return it, etc. 
then also you might see something on a hanger and it looks completely different on you. I've had this multiple times. You see this beautiful dress, the one that I'm thinking of, it had a little cut out here. When I put it on, it's like the saggy sack, but on the hanger, it's like, wow, that's beautiful, I'm gonna take it home. And then in a lot of cases, people can't be bothered to go and take that thing back. So they'll just keep it in the wardrobe and it goes to waste. And that's a waste, waste, waste. So just try things on and know your sizing if you're shopping online. And that is kind of the end. So I can put in the description a list of these things you can screenshot and then every time you go shopping, you can just make these little questions inside your head of just like, is it the season of peace? Is it trend led? Would I buy it if it was full price? Just these few questions that help you shop more mindfully and it just helps. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you did. If you have any suggestions of things you would like me to film or cover, drop me a message. Or if you're feeling confident, drop me a comment. Because I would like to start filming more consistently because I kind of like the editing process. I found it quite fun. So yeah, if there's anything you'd like me to do, let me know. Thank you very much for taking the time to get to the end of this video. Have a fabulous day. Thank you and good bye. Thanks, bye.